I'm Isabel Barton. I'm an assistant professor in the mining and geological engineering department at the University of Arizona. And I've been working with Headwall for several years now. Well, we did uh, started off with just a small pilot project. And from there, it kind of grew into an ongoing significant research collaboration and aimed at optimizing hyperspectral remote sensing systems for the specific needs of the mining environment. Hi, I'm Carson Roberts. I'm a senior applications engineer at Headwall Photonics, and I was a part of our mission along with a couple of university partners to the Cooperite Hills in Nevada, uh, where we flew our drones with hyperspectral and LIDAR imagery to basically do geology field work. Uh, with some applications to the mining industry. My name is Chris Kratt, and I'm the laboratory coordinator at the Center for Transformative Environmental Monitoring Programs within the College of Science at the University of Nevada, Reno. We're funded by the National Science Foundation. I'm here supporting hyperspectral mineral mapping at Cuprite, Virginia City, Perry Canyon, and Desert Peak, all located within the state of Nevada. Hi, my name is Charlie Kepler. Um, I was a member of the team who just went on a trip out to Cooperite, Nevada to do some hyperspectral scans of the Cooperite region. A lot of times when we have these opportunities to go um, to a customer site to do a demonstration or to do a service trip um, where we're collecting data uh, out in the field, um, I'm usually the first person that kind of gets called into that. The reason Cooperite is particularly good for hyperspectral is that it has a long history as a test site for hyperspectral imaging. Uh, USGS and various other entities have done a lot of uh, previous much larger scale hyperspectral work there going back really to the 80s and 90s well before drones were available and so with Cooperite, we have a really unusual chance to build on that history of previous work by using the new technology particularly the drones a couple of things that uh, the hyperspectral imaging, particularly the remote sensing hyperspectral imaging can give is this ability to make mineral maps of large areas, three-dimensional mineral maps because we're using the LIDAR. And those can tell us a couple of different things. One thing that the minerals can tell us is the geologists are familiar with all the hydrothermal alterations that change rocks from one form into another and incidentally concentrate metal ores. And it's pretty well established that if you see this particular type of clay next to this other particular type of clay in a general formation of a particular type of geology, it's likely that there will be metals there. Now we were in Cooperite, Nevada, which hasn't been mined because all the proper hydrothermal processes have happened there, but they just didn't happen to concentrate any metal, so it's not been worth anybody's time to dig it all up, and so everything's already there. But this gives us the chance to verify that we can see all these different types of alteration minerals. That can then help in looking in an active mine in mapping what has been exposed, in predicting what's going to be underneath, and helping direct the planning of a mine or even prospecting an area that it may be worth mining. And then a second thing that we've already done some work on is there are some minerals that are not of interest to the mining geologists, but that can lead to instability of the slopes that are being mined. And we have done some work where we can identify some of these swelling clays and give some information before there's any subsidence that maybe this particular part of a mine might be unstable and the planners of the mine can change the way they dig to reduce the risk of slope collapses which can lead to loss of equipment and personnel. I, I have to admit I have a soft spot for drone technology and the sight of a hexacopter toting a hyperspectral sensor up over a mine is just thrilling in general. It takes a lot of organization and planning, but it's been 
very illuminating and, and very interesting to see the results. When we work with our partners to do the spectral processing and generate, a, say, a map of minerals, we can drape that over the three-dimensional point cloud to generate some really stunning and illuminating three-dimensional images of the geology of the area over which we flew. I thought we had a very good team out there. So we had experts in hyperspectral remote sensing, in Nevada geology, in you know, mining and minerals, in epithermal systems, which is what we were scanning on. There's a tremendous opportunity to use hyperspectral to do things like pinpoint the deleterious minerals that can really cause headaches in a process circuit before they hit the mill. So things like talc, for instance, are notorious for causing huge, huge metallurgical problems. Some of the clays as well, like the Montmorillonites, the Smectite group, that kind of thing. And the kicker here is that unlike some other minerals, they're also virtually impossible to detect in the field by standard remote or standard field mapping techniques. And so I, I see a big niche there, not exactly a niche, more of a sector for hyperspectral imaging to help identify the materials that no other technique can that are important to identify if you're gonna design an efficient processing circuit. Uh, anything else I want to say? No, this, I mean, it was a, it was a very, you know, relatively easy going mission. Um, you know, we had good weather, we had good company, we had, um, you know, we just, everything went, you know, kind of according to plan, which doesn't always happen. So, uh, you know, very fortunate to, you know, have the Bartons and have Chris Kratt there to help us out. Um, and overall, it was just a successful week, successful mission. And, um, you know, we're, we're happy with how it turned out. So we're looking forward to crunching through the data and seeing what we, you know, what we ended up with.